motivation to ramp up practices with the opponents you're playing this week? Um, is there been an added what? Maybe motivation is not the right word, but is there been like an added intensity to the practices this week knowing the opponents? You know, I just, I'm telling you, whenever I, I feel a lack of it, focus or intensity, I just look down the hall and I see this Ray Stewart, Coach Stewart. He just breathes intensity in everything he does. Right, Ray? Let's go, baby. Uh, listen, we, we, we um, I wish we could increase the intensity. I just think that's the way this team approaches it every day. Uh, we, we recognize how hard every game is. The truth is, is that St. Mary's was the hardest game we played all season. And before that, Pacific was the hardest game we played all season. And now Gonzaga is going to be the hardest game we played all season. So it's just um, we prepare as hard as we possibly can for every game. We just don't know any other way to do it. How similar or different is this year's Gonzaga team compared to the one you saw last year? Well, they're longer because of Chet. He makes them way longer. Um, they are a little bit younger um, in some ways. Uh, you know, for example, Corey was there last year, and, and he was just a vet's vet. He'd been there forever. He was like Drew, right? Um, um, they are uh, still built, in, in essence, some of the same things are still terrifying. They're still playing ridiculously fast. Uh, they're really, really skilled. They're incredibly physical. Um, they're super talented. Um, so all the, all the problems are the same. It's just some different faces. Kind of looked, it kind of looked like you had a mixture of coaches and players mimicking guys the length of Chet Holmgren and Andrew Timmy. Who did you have out there during practice? Well, Coach Robinson is practicing a lot for us right now just because we're down bodies, so he spent a lot of time on the practice court, and he's a heck of a basketball player. Um, so he's 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 uh, been spending the most time out there. But when we do individual work, uh, all of our coaches are on the floor trying to do the best they can to simulate. The one thing about Gonzaga is you can't. You know, it's like um, you you can try your best to mimic their pace and their length and athleticism and skill, but you just can't. The first time you're going to see it is Thursday night at 8 p.m. when the ball tips, right? Um, but you're just trying to you're just trying to connect some of the concepts and and some of the things that are most urgent with our guys' experience and and um, if we could do that, we'll have a chance to be successful. How much is this game a measuring stick for you guys at this point of the season? Well, it always is when you play the Zags. They're one of the top teams in the country. Usually, they're the top you know the undisputed top team in the country, and they might be this year also right now. Um, but it, it's great. I mean, you know, we've talked about this a lot when you get to get to go play the best team in the country at their place. Um, that's actually the toughest game you're going to you're going to any team in college basketball is going to have. Um, and they certainly have been that, you know, they, they did a graphic during the um, Pepperdine game. Uh, so I'm watching film, just kind of cutting it up and taking notes. And all of a sudden I see this graphic come on that's just got um, five game scores, just the points scored in five games. And so I went back and listened to the volume. And it is all of Drew Timmy's losses in his tenure at Gonzaga. There's only five teams. And um, that's a pretty incredible thing. And this is year four, right? And um, and so, you know, it's a, it's a unique gift for us that nobody else in the country gets, really, in the last couple of years. We played them more than anybody else. And so... It is a, you know, you always want to go play the best, and they are the very best. Are these the type of games, Coach, that you tell, you bring up to a T. John Lucas or, or Seneca Knight when they're trying to, you're making the decision to come here, I mean, the, the opportunities to stay to play in these type of games? Yeah, well, I think certainly uh, Gonzaga has gone a long way to validating this conference, right? So, um, you know, their name always comes up. You, you, you know, they're, they're, they've been ranked number one in the country, I think, for, wasn't it, two straight years, right? And then, um, you know, they've played in the national championship game two out of the last three or four years, or give or take. And um, they certainly have been the most successful basketball team record-wise in the last decade in college basketball. It's pretty impressive. And so, um, yeah, it, it comes up a little bit. You know, we keep our schedule pretty pretty uh, loaded, so definitely that's one of the things that comes up. Um, but more, it's for more for our current players 
It's just the chase. It's not just us. It's every team in college basketball that's chasing Gonzaga. Kentucky's chasing Gonzaga. North Carolina's chasing Gonzaga. Duke is chasing Gonzaga. Everybody's chasing Gonzaga. So uh, the fact that they're right here in our league is pretty awesome. What do you think the weekend overall at like Gonzaga at San Francisco? How much do you think the non-conference schedule that you guys put together, what this team's been through, helps going into a weekend like this? Well, I do feel like we've been tested for sure. Um, we haven't had uh, two games in three days like this, though. Um, but but you know as close to as close to that as we can get we have um, I think I think our guys have a healthy understanding of how challenging this is I think they have an understanding of how what a great opportunity is um, you know there's 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 not that many road trips in any team anywhere in the country is going to have than this Gonzaga San Francisco trip this year right. In terms of the distance and the geography and the quality of teams and, and the venues, and so um, it's pretty cool that we get to do it right now, right? And and you know we will we we will learn so much from this road trip, and and I'm excited about that. You feel better prepared for this matchup against Gonzaga, considering previous two, two games in the regular season were moved up on short notice. Um, I don't know. You know, I don't know if you're ever prepared to play these guys. Nobody has been so far, right? Um, but you know, we've you know our two regular season games uh, last year, home and away. You kind of looked up at the clock a minute and thirty seconds in, and you're like, "What just happened?" It's like a halftime score against St. Mary's, and um, and so it happens really fast and. Um, you know, it took us, you know, I talk about this all the time, guys. When you're coaching players, you're always trying to match up your words with their experience and understanding. And so every single team that has played the Zags, I don't know what they played, 12, 14 games, let's say. So they've had 14 teams that spent the two or three or four days or five days or one day or whatever they had to prep talking about transition defense. Everybody's changing their game plan, saying, hey, we're sending five guys back. We're sending seven guys back. We're going to recruit all three officials to run back and transition with us. And um, still, the Zags are still running everybody to death, right? They just scored 117 points. The second possession of the game. I know Lorenzo Romar is 10 times the coach I will ever dream of being, okay? The second possession of the game it was 28 seconds into the game. Was a, it was it was actually the second possession uh, Gonzaga setting the score, and it was a it was a defensive rebound and a 60 foot like laser pass to a layup. Trust me, Lorenzo Romar has been talking about. He, I think they had a 10 day prep, right? Because they were out with COVID. I guarantee every one of those 10 days he was telling his guys, "We got to get back in transition." So the challenge is actually matching up those words with like players DNA like what's inside them the urgency they feel and so you know you asked about playing tough games in our schedule all that stuff helps right it helps bridge the gap between the words you're saying and the urgency that you're asking for and the players understanding of what that really means and feels like and looks like you know, you're a big believer in seniors are, are magic does the magic need to show itself in, in the yes. and on the hilltop this weekend yep we're not winning a lot of games without Alex and Tijon being great, you know, um, they don't have to score all the points. They don't have to make all the plays, but they got to be. They, they they have their presence has to be felt. There's no doubt about it. It's just really really important for us. Speaking of Alex, how uh, how impressed were you with with his effort on the glass in St. Mary's, and how important is that for you for your team being undersized? Yeah. So uh, not only his effort on the glass, but his his focus on the defensive end was at an elite level. Um, you know, we talked about this after the game a little bit. He he had uh, he's he's actually had a great year defensively. It was just a little bit of slippage for two or three games leading up to the Pacific St. Marys. And St. Marys, he was just in terms of making reads on the defensive end and filling holes and um, being in the right spot at the right time in the right way. He was incredible, and all, part of that is the glass. 
And so I was super proud of him. I mean, it's hard to do what he did on the defensive end for any of us to ever have a night like he did on the defensive end. He was really special. And Tijon was really, really special. And so we need them to continue to do that for us to be successful. What can a game like this do for a player like Booth, who's a freshman, whose role has been elevated because of just the roster stuff that has happened to you like this? Well, you know, um, for a lesser uh, freshman, it could break them, or it could, you know, uh, it could break them either way. They could play great and it could ruin them, or they, he could play bad and it could ruin them, or he could play medium and it could ruin them, right? But Foos is just such an extraordinary young man that this is just going to be whatever happens, whether he plays great or medium or poor, um, he's going to learn from it and he's going to grow from it. So that's the impact that's going to have for him. You know, I think it's fun for every player, just like I was talking about. Um, after the St. Mary's game about how I feel so happy for all these players of other teams that get to walk into this gym and just experience one of the ultimate college basketball atmospheres in the country going right now. Um, you know, I, I love it for every player to go play against, you know, the top, you know, college basketball team in the country over the last 10 years. Like, that's pretty great. So he gets to go kind of measure himself and see where he is, and he's going to grow from it. And... Um, and so that's really exciting for all the guys on this team that they get to do that. In the time that you've known Foos, what have you learned about his kid as a person off the court? Well, he is a he is a he is a he is incredibly kind. He's really really smart, and he's got an old soul. And what I mean by that is, um, he is, um, you know, he's consistent. Every single day, he he gets up in the morning to do his work. You know, if he he's one of those guys that you know, is you, you would describe him. I don't know if this is actually factual because I don't check his room, but he's one of those guys that you would get expect that gets up and makes his bed every single morning. Right? He just handles his business every single morning. Him and Atiki's schedule right now is so tough because they're. I mean, from from the time when they wake up in the morning till. You know, late in the evening, they're either on the court, in the film room, doing basketball meetings with their tutors in class or doing homework. Like, it literally is. Uh, they're on a military regiment right now. And and I have never heard either one of those young men ever even look sideways about what they're doing. It's incredible. You know, I, I, wish, I wish I could be as disciplined as Foose is. And so he is a, he's a special young man.